Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with another project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled ArmorTech King Tiger heavy tank. And since the last video update, the model is finally in paint. And I have been waiting to say that sentence for a really, really long time. But as you can clearly see, the model has been entering into its painting process. The primer has been added, the base coat has been added and the next step from here is going to be the camouflage but we'll be touching upon that as the video goes on okay so this entire build really has led up to this moment here at this point the model is being stripped down and is getting ready to head off into paint at the moment the turd has been removed obviously the section over here has been masked up i don't want any paint on the inside of the model and on that note same has also been done to right over here on the rear engine deck. The whole engine deck has been thoroughly masked up. If I get the camera into the grill slats over here, you can see the blue showing through. And also, as a added measure, paper has been applied to the inside, thus really sealing it off as much as possible from any sort of paint. With the full interior, or I should say the full engine compartment interior, it will be really anticlimactic after going through all of that just to have it get oversprayed. So that's something that I'm definitely going to avoid at all costs. At the same time, the tin work has been promptly removed. And in a moment, I'm actually going to be taking off the tracks. The next thing I'm going to do before the paint procedure can actually begin is to thoroughly wipe off all the sections with a tack cloth as well as hit the entire sur model surface with some compressed air. This is going to be absolutely important because you want to make sure that there are no impurities on the surface which would obviously cause some complications when the paint gets finally applied. So that is definitely something to watch out for. After the surfaces are prepped, the next thing I'm going to do is give the tank a final coat of primer. This is just to make sure that all surfaces are thoroughly coated because since the model was last primed, obviously a lot of detail fittings have been applied to the surface. And also we have some areas of the bodywork where things have been sanded down. I always like to have the primer be as pure as possible so that once the model is thoroughly coated, then it will give the best chance possible for the, the actual base coat to adhere and adhere fully. And here's the model now in its coat of final prime. And as you can clearly see, once everything is covered in one solid color, it really does start to look a little bit more appropriate. You'll also notice that the final prime has been applied primarily to the upper extremities. The lower sections have been masked off with just some plastic shopping bags. This is because the lower sections have already been thoroughly primed, painted, and also weathered for the reasons that I touched upon in many other videos. And that's, well, frankly put, good luck trying to paint interloven wheels like this once everything is fully assembled. I know some nut jobs out there like to do that on their smaller scale builds and a few crazier people want to think they could pull it off on a 1-6 scale tank like this, but that is just crazy talk. If you're building any sort of tank model, regardless of the scale, paint the wheels separately prior to installation. And on an RC tank like this, it's actually double important. The bags will probably stay on the sections over here until even after the base coat. Once the base coat is on, then the bags are removed because then I can go in there with the camouflage and that's something that's more or less precisionly done and the bags aren't really necessary anymore because the risk of overspray is greatly reduced, if not totally eliminated. So now that the model is thoroughly primed, it's now ready for me to go into the painting process. However, before I do that, I do want to take the opportunity to mention something that is probably the second most commonly asked question that I get in my videos. And that is exactly how do I paint and prime these things. What type of paints do I use? What's the application? So on and so forth. And by the way, the number one commonly asked question is where the hell do I find these and where can I buy one? That's question number one. But a second follow-up is what I just mentioned about the paint. So obviously, in order to apply the paint, you need to have some sort of a primer as the base. This always helps with getting the paint to adhere to the surface in a much more efficient and strong manner. When it comes to the primer and the or specifically for the primer coat, if you go on the ArmorTech forums and look on what most people use, they generally have a consensus of using a product called Etch Primer. And this is by and large what most of the other builders out there tend to use. However, I'm a bit of an outlier and a rebel in this regard because honestly, I think Etch Primer is nothing more than a meme. I don't want to quite say it's snake oil, but it's definitely just not seen what it's all cracked up to be. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be inundated with 
comments in the comments section saying, oh, well, I'm a professional, worked in this field or aerospace for 20, 30 years, and I always use it all the time. If you don't, the paint's going to chip off, blah, 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 blah. Which, if you are, congratulations. However, uh, from my personal experience, I have Armatech builds that I built back since 2005 or so, and the paint on them is the last thing that is a concern. So they hold up quite well with the techniques that I utilize. And before anyone asks, yes, I have used etch primer in the past. And honestly, I literally see absolutely no difference between using the etch primer and using just the stuff that I use here. As for what type of primer do I use? Well, it's quite simple. I use just rattle can spray paint. This is just Ace brand premium spray paint. You could also use some of the more premium brands if that's what you have around you, like from Krylon. Rust-Oleum does make several other primers themselves. However, I tend not to like Rust-Oleum too much because from my experience, their paints have been hit and miss in the past where sometimes the formulas are perfect and they dry great. Other times the mix is off for some reason and the paint never dries and stays sticky. Obviously that's something that's less than ideal and when you have a model that's this expensive and when you're at this point of the build, the last thing you want is something stupid to happen like your primer doesn't set right. While on the topic of the primer itself, another commonly asked question is, John, what is the ideal best color to use for your primer? Do you use red? Do you use gray? Because, you know, you have videos where you have both. And also, for some models, like, for instance, my static 135s and even some 116s, I go with flat black. Well, the answer is quite simple. As someone one time mentioned in the comment section, the answer is yes. That's the answer. I use basically... All three of those colors, just depending on whatever I have on hand, whatever is on sale, and also what am I looking to achieve with the build. Some people out there, there are a little bit more sticklers to this, where the tank must be in oxy rot prior to the base coat being applied, because damn it, that's how the Germans did it, and that's how I'm going to do it on my build. And if that's you, congratulations. That's a little bit, you know, uh, you might want to have some priorities lined up, but regardless, that's some individual's opinions out there. And some people even argue between gray or red and they go back and forth. In my opinion, the color of the primer isn't really all that important per se, okay? The whole point of the primer is just to have a nice surface for the base coat and then the subsequent camo and weathering to stick to. That's really all there is to it. So the color itself isn't really all that important outside of personal preferences for most individuals. For me, it's again, just depends on what's on sale and what's more plenty available at a certain time. Occasions, I'll have lots of red on hand. Occasionally, I'll have lots of gray, and I'll just use the two colors intermittently. Which, if anyone is a fan of this video series, you will note that on the duration of the build, when I'm priming certain items, I've used all three colors from time to time. However, for the final prime, I tend to generally stick with all red, just for, you know, one reason or another. It's nothing really specific or all that special. It's just, I don't know, it kind of looks all nice and red on video. But same could also be true for gray, but... I just had a lot of red on hand, so that's why I went with it. The color of the primer really doesn't matter, like I said before, unless you're doing something specific with the paintwork. And what I mean by that is if you're doing a build where it's like a last ditch, where you have, you know, the hull and the turret of two different colors and the turret is all left in red primer, then obviously the color choice is going to be more relevant. Another time when the color of the primer is relevant is if you have a tank with zemerite coating on it and you want to have sections of the zemerite chipped off when it shows the primer color underneath. That is obviously also a situation where perhaps the color of the primer is going to be relevant for your build. So take it from me, the color of the primer is more or less irrelevant. It could be red, it could be gray, it could be black with polka dots. As long as you have something on the surface for the main base coat and the subsequent paintwork to adhere to, that's what's really important. Okay, so the black and polka dots is a bit far-fetched, but you get the idea. Either go with red, go with gray, and if you're just painting the build traditionally, i.e. not do anything funky with the weathering or anything special with the paintwork, more or less, the primer coat is irrelevant. Case in point, here we have the turret, which has been mostly reprimed with the single color. However, you'll notice that the front barrel section, I just left with the gray color from earlier on, because again, the paint on here is pretty thoroughly applied, has been scratched off or anything, and the main base coat's going to adhere absolutely perfectly. So putting paint on this section over here, it's really irrelevant. Also, since this does have a recoiling feature, if you add more layers of paint on here, it's going to thicken it up, and it's just going to lead to more issues. So with all that out of the way, it's now time to get into the application of the base coat. 
For the base gun, this one I'm going to go with German Dunkelgelb, which is quite customarily seen on many of my German builds, unless it's an earlier vehicle, to which then I usually go with Panzer Grey. Well, anyway, for the paint, again, this is another really commonly asked question that I get is, what type of paints do you use on these things? And for me, I use exterior latex house paint. This is the type of paint that I've painted not just my 1.6 scale models with, but it's also seen on my 116s and also on my 135s. While on the topic of the actual paint usage, there is some individuals out there that like to have this misconception on what type of paints used on a model like this. Because it's all metal, they think, well, you know what, it should be painted with car paints. And unfortunately, a large number of individuals out there tend to paint their armor tech tanks with car paints. And honestly, I've yet to be impressed with anyone that has ever done that. It is by far the absolute worst medium ever to paint your, your model tank with. It looks terrible. It doesn't look good. It doesn't blend well, and the airbrush on top of it makes it look even worse. Avoid that stuff like the plague. I've yet to meet a, or I should say, I've yet to come across a armor tech or any 1.6 scale tank build that has been painted with car paints that looked remotely satisfactory. Every one of them was a, a, an abysmal dumpster fire. So avoid that medium at all costs. As for the paint itself, like I mentioned before, it is just nothing more than exterior latex house paint. It's flat. You always want to go with flat. Avoid semi-gloss, avoid gloss. That is another common misconception on how to paint these things. Flat is the way to go. Just go with the flat and it'll never be a problem with you. So for the paint mix itself, well, you know, this is something that I always mention mostly in my OTR videos, but you can actually make your own custom mix. And what I either do is I find uh, paint from a modeling company that I like the shade of, and I go ahead and make a color swatch, take it to the Home Depot, and now I have a gallon of this stuff that I can use for basically any build that comes across my path. For my Dunkelgelb, it's basically, to me, a dark yellow. I always did like the way that shade of of Dunkelgelb look, then my mix here is pretty much to me a Dunkelgelb, but in a gallon format. And obviously, if you're building a 1.6 scale tank, you're going to be going through a lot of those little bottles of Tamiya, so specifically for the base coat. So, yeah, I recommend trying to see if you could make a clone of it in a format that gives you lots and lots of volume. For the application, I am going to be utilizing the spray gun, and this is the spray gun I have over here. This is actually the first time I use this this setup this one here i picked it up from harbor freight uh, about a year or so ago because it was like why not things like 12 bucks or so so they're basically giving them away and i might as well add it to my my little toolbox normally i do have a slightly larger spray gun but for some reason i can't really find it in the shop so when that eventually turns up you know i'll go ahead and clean it out and and use it on another build but for this one here i'm going to try out this new harbor freight special for a, the application of the base coat the spray gun, in my opinion, is the best way to go because you need to cover a larger volume of the model surface as opposed to using an airbrush. Now, of course, you can easily do the same technique with an airbrush and it'll work just fine. It's only it's going to take a lot longer and you're going to have to top off that little bucket of paint quite frequently. What I like to do is for the main base coat, I roll with the spray gun. Then for the precision paint applications say you know there's undercuts or some other type of area that I can't really get access to easily with the spray gun that is when I use the airbrush because it's more precise I am I'm able to get the paint where it needs to go and most importantly with the correct volumes to prevent drips drips is your enemy you don't want to have drips on your paint job and that goes for all these models not necessarily just the big ones so for the main overcoat spray gun for the in-depth precision areas where the paint needs to go, I use the airbrush. Also at this time, I'm going to cast shade on a very popular and commonly used modeling painting technique, and that's in the terms of counter shading. There is this technique out there where you have the model painted with a light gray, or sometimes I've even seen people do it with bare exposed plastic, which is just mind-numbingly stupid. That's just, I hate that technique. But anyway, you have a gray, a light gray painted object, and then with the airbrush, you go and you airbrush thick, flat black edging around the sections. Then, with several thinner shades of the base coat, you apply it in layers, and then that'll give you the counter shading. And I hate that technique. It's a terrible technique. I don't like that technique. The way I like to build my models is I paint 
the model op with the opacity first, and then the weathering and fading gets added naturally, much along the lines as it would in real life. If you do that technique where you add thin layers on, it's not really gonna work. I mean, it does work. Some people like it, they swear by it. I can't stand it for a simple fact that you can't really maintain it. If the model gets scratched, and by the way, this is a radio control tank. It's one six scale, which means it's gonna be handled quite a bit when you just move it around. And on top of that, since it is radio controlled, you're gonna get scratches. It's gonna happen. Good luck trying to blend that in. It's just way too problematic. It's just a terrible technique. And then you have to, you know, apply camouflage over it. And then sometimes you have to redefine the camo pattern. If you don't like the blotches, now you have extra passing on. It down, it goes downhill really, really quickly. I hate that technique. It'll be a cold day in hell you ever see me incorporate that on any of my builds, let alone a one six scale one. To dilute the paint, this is done with just straight up tap water. I don't use anything fancy like any other types of alcohols or specialty type thinners. Just straight up tap water, it's all that you need. As for the consistency, well, like I mentioned in the OTR videos, this is more or less done by feel and experience. And after you've practiced enough times, you basically can just look at the paint getting poured and you'll know whether or whether or not it's too thick or could use a few drops of water to thin it out. Okay, so here you can see the tart and the hull getting its base coat of Dunkel Gelb. The hull has about two coats on it so far. The turret just got its first prelim coat. And then once the paint sets and dries for a little bit, then I'll go ahead and add probably another coat or two to each, just to make sure that the base is nice and thoroughly applied. You don't want the paint obviously to be too thick, but you don't want it to be too thin either. Again, so you want to find that nice happy medium. And uh, just roughly about two, maybe three coats max is generally how much it takes to get one of these models thoroughly painted. So after the last couple coats of the base are applied, this is the end result. As you can see, the model is looking really, really, really good. Also at this time, I was able to remove the mask on the turret ring, and I was able to plop the turret into place. With the turret on, this will definitely help with the camouflage pattern, which is the next thing that's going to be applied to this model. However, before I continue any further, might as well take a quick little impromptu walk around because it's really nice to see this model finally in a single color, as opposed to the mix and match that this thing has looked for far too long. And really, at the end of the day, all of those tips and techniques and replacements and changes and tweaks, all that stuff is just for the result that you have right here. All in all, I definitely say, I think it was worth it. Also one quick plug is the spray gun. This Harbor Freight spray gun was absolutely perfect. It did the job phenomenally. I was able to apply the paint without any sort of issues. It went on in a nice even manner. And the spray was to the point where it's large enough to cover some decent sized panels pretty quickly, but it's also precise enough where it actually allowed me to go in and hit some pinpoint areas, which would otherwise not be possible with the other spray guns that are in my inventory. This unit here, it's highly recommended. If anyone is working on a 1-6 scale tank and they're hitting the point where they have to paint it, be it from Armor Tech or the Dragon or whatever maker flavor, one of these Harbor Freight El Cheapo spray guns over here it would be a nice instrumental piece to add to your toolbox. The only caveat is you gotta have a good air compressor to go with it. That little bubbler piece of junk that you generally see in Hobby Lobby, yeah, I ain't gonna cut it. You're gonna need to get a hardware store type air compressor, but if anyone watches my OTR videos, you'll know that that's what I recommend for even basic model airbrushing on 135s. But more information about that is definitely discussed in those videos. I recommend checking that out. However, like I was alluding to before, if you're working on a 1.6 scale tank, one of these units over here would definitely behoove the builder to check out. The next step, of course, is to get this model into its camouflage configuration. However, this is something I'm going to have to do first thing in the morning because I am currently running out of sunlight and at an ever more increasing rate. So I better wrap this up pretty quickly. As I already touched upon in another video, the customer already picked the camouflage pattern that he wants for his particular tank. And this is something that is going to be applied and it's gonna be done via the airbrush. However, this is something that I'm gonna to have to be mentioning in the next project update video, which good news is should be posted not too far off after this video here makes its debut. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this one six scale ArmorTech radio controlled German King Tiger heavy tank. 
If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content being one six scale project update videos like this one over here or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in loop new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start as well as photographs of the other larger and smaller scale builds that have been seen on this channel. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again. I'll be seeing you all again shortly on the next one. Till then.